first on audio cassette, then CD, VCD, DVD, MP3, and now micro SD memory card. Yes, Pastor W. F. Kumi's messages are now available on micro SD memory cards. You can now listen to any message of your choice on your mobile phone or hand hand computer anywhere, anytime, and everywhere. Enrich your life and ministry with any of the MP3 series, Bible teaching, or revival messages playing directly from your handset or hand hand computer. Pastor Kumiya's messages on 1 gigabyte and 2 gigabyte micro SD memory cards with an optional card reader will be on sale. There will also be downloading of any message you want to your mobile phone at affordable price. For further inquiries, contact Life Tips Limited, 3 Ayodele Okewo Street, Bagada, Lagos, or International Bible Training Center, IBTC, Ayoboyipa, Lagos. Email lifetips.hq at deeperlifeonline.org. Telephone. Remember. A message a day keeps the devil away. Stay blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. I pray for every one of my brothers, every one of my sisters, all our children, all our youths, our teenagers. Anywhere, everywhere now, I pray the victory will come into their lives in Jesus' name. All unseen forces in your life are conquered. All evil powers in your life, they are conquered. And with Jesus Christ, you become champions in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that this glorious, wonderful day, you confirm your word in every heart, every life, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. Have you read Mark chapter 16 from verse 1? And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, that Sunday, they came unto the sepulchre at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great and entering into the sepulchre. They saw a young man sitting at the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. And he says unto them, Be not afraid, be not afraid. You see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him as he said unto you. And he went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre. For they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they any any say to any man for they were afraid now when jesus was risen early the first day of the week he appeared first to mary magdalene out of whom he had cast seven devils and she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept and they when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them, as they walked and went into the country. And he went and told each 
to the residue. Neither believes they them at what he appeared unto the eleven. Twelve minus one. Twelve apostles minus Judas who had died, who killed himself. At what he appeared unto the eleven. As they searched at meat and upbraided, rebuked them with their unbelief and the hardness of heart. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. I believe. I believe. I'm saved. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take off serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick. And they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, He was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God and they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord walking with them and confirming the word was signs following Amen Explosive power over unseen forces You've seen the promise there already because Jesus rose from the dead because His power now circled the whole globe and he said all power in heaven and on earth is given unto me and then he said because of that go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and then he said lo behold i am with you Always until the end of the world. That's why we're here today. Because Jesus won. Because Jesus conquered. Because Jesus overcame. Because all power now resides in the name of Jesus. That's why today when we stand in authority in that name. Every unseen force. Every unseen force. Every unseen enemy. Every unseen, every unseen evil spirit will bow in the name of Jesus. Three things we're going to consider. Number one, the power of partnership over unseen enemies. The power of partnership over unseen enemies. Number two, the purpose of power. Everything that God does, He does for a reason. There is a purpose why He has given us this power. The purpose of power over unseen enemies. Number three, the power of prayer over unseen enemies. When the people of God stand up to pray, understanding what Christ has accomplished on the cross of Calvary, understanding the meaning of the power of resurrection when we stand with that understanding of the power of resurrection and we pray in the name the glorious name of Christ what awesome great power resides in that name the power of prayer over unseen forces unseen enemies number one the power of partnership to start with, we are now partners of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you realize the power we have, the authority we have, just being associated with Christ. The power of partnership in Ephesians chapter 2. Reading from verse 1, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. First of all, he tells us what we were. And then he tells us who we are now. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. And you, as he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins, 
wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. He said, This is what we were. We well, were dead in sins and trespasses. We well, were being directed in place and controlled by the prince of the power of the air. That's before we tasted the power of the cross. That's before we tasted the power of the resurrection of Christ. It says in verse 3, among whom also we had, we all had our conversation in times past, times past, times past. In the laws of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others are in the past tense. Then he now tells us, after the crucifixion, after the victory of Christ through the cross, now he tells us, after the resurrection, after the power that rolled away the stone, after the power that made Jesus Christ to come out of the grave, after the power of resurrection that then spread all over the people that believe. Paul the apostle said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. But for but God who is rich in mercy for his great love, where we still loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. Partnership with Christ. Partnership with Christ. He has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. And he has raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That partnership with Christ. The togetherness with Christ. Then gives us a kind of power over evil spirits, evil powers. Let me show you an illustration. For Samuel chapter 5. For Samuel chapter 5. The power of partnership. Just the very fact that we're seated together with him. Just the very fact he's seated together with us. Just the very fact he's close by. Even when we're not praying. Just being together with Christ. Look at the implication of that. For Samuel chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. And the Philistines chew the ark of God. This is symbol, a representation, a type of Christ. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon. That's a representation of Satan. Dagon, dragon. And search each by Dagon. And when day of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. Give me a good hallelujah. <laughs> there was no priest there. There was no high priest there. There was no prayer warrior there. There was no Levites there. There was no Israelite there. Just the ark of God. And they said that ark of God in the temple of Dagon. Just the ark. The presence of the ark. By the time the people came in the morning, Dagon was falling down. The very fact that Jesus is present in your life, Satan has fallen. Evil spirits are falling. Just the very fact to a child of God. And your partnership with the Almighty God and with Jesus Christ, Satan will not have any victory in your life. They will fall. They will fall. All your sin enemies in your life, they are falling already in Jesus' name. But the people are not learning their lesson. They didn't understand. They thought this is accidental. You know, when they see the victory in your life, oh, they say that's accidental. 
When they see the prosperity in your life, or they say that's like, they will soon lose it, that's accidental. When they see that now the joy of the Lord is the strength of your life, they say that's accidental, that's just for one day, you'll soon lose it. This one you are getting, you will never lose it. This victory you have got, you will never lose it. You will trample upon all your sin forces, all your sin enemies in Jesus' name. And they took Dagon. They had to take him. They had to help him. You know, a God, they have to help. That's not a God. That's an idol. That's an idol. And all those, you know, they need to do ritual. They need to do sacrifice. They need to do this and that. We don't do any sacrifice. We just come here with our Bible in our hand or the Word of God in our mouth with faith in our heart. We just stand. We don't do any ritual. Do you do ritual? Do you do sacrifice? We just stand like this. We don't have to roll on the ground. Do you roll on the ground? I will say, in the name of Jesus and all the power of resurrection that came on that first Sunday, in uh, that, that Sunday morning, all the power. When you mention that name, every scene, all the people just fall down like this. Don't you remember when the angels came from heaven to roll away the stone? We're told, all those people, the guards, not our guards, their own guards. I said their own guards. They fell to the ground. They will fall to the ground. And then in verse 4, And when they arose early, on the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling again on his face to the ground. Before the ark of the Lord, this time the head of Dagon, both the palms of his hands were cut off. Their hands are cut off. Upon the threshold, only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the prince of Dagon, nor any that come into Dagon's house, tread on the threshold of Dagon uh, in Ashdod until this day. We don't even need to talk about them again. They are gone. We have forgotten them. Because we're told in First John, First John chapter four, First John chapter four, verse four: Ye of God, little children, those people of God, where are they? Where are they? Let Satan see that hand. Let Almighty God see that hand. You of God, I said, you of God. You know, it even says little children, and some of you are not little children, you are not newcomers, some of you are just big men and big women, and your fathers and mothers, thank God you have God. And it says, and you have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. No worry, no anxiety anymore, no fear anymore. This uh, evil power belonging to the unseen forces, unseen enemies, they are destroyed even today. Point number two, the purpose of power over unseen enemies. What's the purpose? As the Lord gives us a victory, and He makes us to enjoy the power, the victory coming from... The, the day of resurrection, the power of the resurrection of Christ, as we come to enjoy and experience that power of the resurrection, what is the purpose of that power over the unseen enemies? The purpose, the purpose, and let's look at it in Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. I'm reading to you from verse 1. The purpose of your release, the purpose of your freedom, the purpose why you are loosed and delivered, the purpose of your healing, the purpose of the joy of the Lord in your heart, in your life. What is the purpose? Matthew chapter 21. And when they draw nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives. Then sent Jesus to the disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a coach with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. Loose them, release them, set them free. 
what's the purpose? Bring them to me. The reason why you are loosed, and the reason why you are set free, and the reason why the power of resurrection, the power of the resurrection of Christ is setting you free, loose them, bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, he shall say, The Lord has need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and he calls the form, the form of an ass. And then it says, And his disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put, the, and put on them their clothes, and they search him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. All this caught down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And, it, and the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. What's the purpose that us was loosed to carry Jesus to the city? What's the purpose? You're free to carry Jesus to the city. To carry Jesus to the world. That now you're free. Nothing binds you anymore. Nothing binds your heart anymore. Nothing binds your soul anymore. Nothing binds your spirit anymore. He conquers all your enemies for you. All your sin forces, they are sent away from you. You're free. You're free within and you're free without. Your family is free. Your children are free. Your wife, your husband, they are free. Everybody around you, they are free. You are free and you are free and free indeed. Why are you free to carry Jesus to the city? To take Jesus to the people around. In your village, they need Jesus. In your city, they need Jesus. And the thing that tied you before. And you used to spend your money on sickness, on this or that. I used to feel this pain. And you were tied down on the bed of affliction. Or you were tied down on the, on the platform of uh, death and unemployment. But now you are free from death. You are free from unemployment. Or before you were tied to those enemies, you saw them in the dream, you saw them in the day. And you thought about them every time. And they were threatening you. And they said, uh, you think you are going to make it in life? You think certificate is what it is? You think because you went to university, our children did not go to university. And then because you went, and because you are carrying paper in your hand, will make the paper useless in your hand. I'm telling you, they cannot do it anymore. That paper will become more than a paper. That one is going to become a ticket for employment. And you're going to get a good employment in Jesus' name. <laughs> now you're free. But why are you free? What's the purpose of the freedom? What's the purpose of this power over unseen enemies? That now you will take Jesus' courage. Now, nothing disturbs you now. Nothing hinders you now. Nothing ties you down now. Now you're free every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year. Now you're free for the rest of your life. Because now you need to stand up and take Jesus. Don't stand up yet. You need to take Jesus Christ to the city. You they will take him to your city. The word of God will bring salvation to multitudes in your community in Jesus' name. In First Corinthians chapter six, First Corinthians chapter six, we're reading from verse nineteen. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen. Watch, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? That your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? You are no more a habitation of demons. You are no more a habitation of evil spirits. 
Evil spirits, they don't have any part in you anymore. The prince of this world comes and he has nothing in you. Your head is free. I said your head is free. You don't have any mental problem, do you? I said, do you? You don't have depression, do you? Your stomach is free. Your blood system is free. There is no poison in your body anymore. There is no sickness, no disease in your body anymore. You are free and free indeed. Now you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Not the temple of evil spirits. You are no more the temple of evil powers. You are no more the temple of, you know, magicians and all those people. Anybody that is saying, I hid something inside her. That fellow is talking out of says There's nothing hidden in you anymore. Only Christ is in you. Only the Holy Ghost is in you. And then it says, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. What's the purpose of your freedom? The purpose of the power of our synthesis to glorify God now in your body. You're no more glorifying Satan. You're no more glorifying evil spirits. You're no more bowing down to them. You're no more cringing and crawling before those evil powers, those enemies. You're just, you're a child of the king. And you have the freedom and the boldness and the protection of the child of the king. Now you are free. You will glorify God. We're told in Galatians chapter 1, chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 1. The purpose of our freedom. The purpose of the power over unseen enemies. Galatians chapter 1, 5 verse 1. Stand fast therefore. In the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Stand fast. In that liberty, in that freedom where Christ has made us free. And, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It says now that you are free, stand fast in that freedom. And don't talk about the bondage. Don't talk about what it used to be. Just forget it. As water that is gone under the bridge. Don't recall it. It's your memory. I am free. I am free. That's all you need to talk about. You stand in the freedom, in the liberty where Christ has made you free. It tells us in verse 6, For in Jesus Christ, now there's a circumcision. Avail us anything. No uncircumcision, but faith that walketh by love. Why are you free? For you to have faith that now walketh by love. You are free because now you are set free to go and work, to go and love, to go and labor, and to just manifest faith in Christ. That's why we are free. There is a purpose for that freedom. It tells us in verse 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto freedom, unto liberty. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. The liberty we have, the freedom we have, and this power that we have over our sin forces, the purpose, the goal, is so that we'll be serving the Lord. You will serve the Lord. In Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, the purpose of power over unseen forces. You see this man, let me read to you from verse 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the gatherings. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with, un with an unclean spirit what is dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not what chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plugged asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. He was under the power of the unseen forces, evil spirits. And in verse 6, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. 
and he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou son of the Most High, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he, and he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out. They will go out. They always will go out in the name of Jesus and entered into the swine. And they had run violently down with steep, a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told each in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and at the legion sitting and close and in his right mind and they were afraid and, and they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine and they began to pray him to depart out of their coats verse 18 and when he was come into the sheep. He had, uh, he had been, he, he, he that had been possessed was the devil. Prayed him, pleaded with him that he might be with him. Now I am free. Let me stay here. It's like when Peter said, let's build here three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then how be Jesus suffered him not, but says unto him, go home to thy friends and tell them. That's the purpose. That's the reason. The purpose of power over unseen enemies. Now you are delivered. And the man just wanted to stay and be enjoying the fellowship of Christ. But Jesus said, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee. And has had compassion on thee. And he departed. And began to publish it in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. When you tell them your story, they will marvel. Because now you will show the glory of God everywhere you go. I come to point number three. The power of prayer over unseen forces. The power of prayer over unseen forces. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The key. You have the key in your hand. You'll open the door. You will close the door. The one that has the key is the one in authority. Jesus didn't say, I'll give the keys to Herod. There's a key in the hand of the believer that Herod the king does not have. He did not say, I'll give the key to Pilate. There is a key in the hand of the believer that the pilots of the world do not have. And Jesus did not say, I'll give the key unto the members of the Sanhedrin. There is a key. I'm sorry to say this, but I'll say, there's a key in the hand of the believer that the bishops and the archbishops that do not know Christ, that they do not have. You, the way you are today because you know Christ, there's a key in your hand. There's an authority in your mouth. And what you command will be done by God in heaven in Jesus' name. There's a key you have that Habalists do not have. There's a key you have that the people of the world, they may go to any place in the world, they may go to the depths of the sea and go to the top of the mountain to think that they're going to get power. There's a key in your hand today that the people of the world, no matter where they have gone, into the depths, into the highs, a key you have that they do not have. I pray you use that key. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever, 
whatsoever shout it aloud whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven don't cry before the unseen forces anymore you have the power you have the authority and you have the liberty whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed where in heaven matthew chapter 18 verse 18 very lesson to you whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven i rejoice with you because i know that today you have authority in your mouth you have power in your life nothing will bind you anymore let me read your story to you now as a believer some 91 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high that's you that's you where are you living today I said, where are you living today? In the secret place of the most... You are seated with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Satan is looking for you. He cannot find the address of your house anymore. And the evil spirits are looking for you. They cannot find the address of your house anymore. Where is he? Where is he? Let's touch him. They decide you have changed your address. You are no more in that address where you used to be. You are now seated in the secret place of the Most High. Under the shadow of the Almighty, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noise of pestilence, He shall cover thee with His feathers. Under His wings shall thou trust. And you know, when the eagle was over there, and the eagle looked down, and he saw all those little, little cheeks. And then he then was preparing and adjusting himself, and the cheeks, they looked up, they saw the eagle adjusting all his wings, then they came under the wings of the mother hen. And then the eagle now, wanting to dive down, he looked, he could not see the cheeks anymore. Because now they are under the wings of their mother, and the Bible says it shall cover you. He shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at the right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Tell your neighbor there, now I am free. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him, tell her that I am free. Look at the person there and rejoice together. I am free. You are free in Jesus' name. Only with thine eyes shall thou see the reward of the wicked, shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any play come near thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways, they shall bear thee up. See how precious you are. See how important you are. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. You will not die. Yeah. You will live. Yeah. You will live to share and to declare the glory of God in Jesus' name. Yeah. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Why are you still sitting down? Why don't you rise up and just rejoice in the power the Lord has given you? Your problems are gone. The sicknesses are gone. The power of darkness is broken. You are free. Rejoice in your freedom. Rejoice. Things are no more the way they used to be. You are not the weak one. 
that those enemies are tapping on anymore. They cannot try it anymore. They cannot do it anymore. They won't even find your address. They won't even find where you are. You are hidden away from them. Your life is seed with Christ in God. And you're seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Seated together. Seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. This is resurrection morning. This is resurrection morning. Our Lord, your Lord, our God, your God, is out of the graves. The graves could not keep him. The stones could not keep him down. You are free. Because he is free, you are free. Because he lives, you live. Nothing tied him down, nothing will tie you down. You are free in your soul. You are free in your spirit. You are free in your body. You are free in your business. You are free in your family. Everything around you is free. This is the heritage of the believer. The cancer is gone. The leukemia is gone. And all that disease that threatened your life in the past, no more. No more. Because of the power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. The yoke is broken. Rise up and go and succeed. Rise up and move on. March on in the confidence and the trust and the faith of the power of resurrection in your life. Remember the purpose why you are free is to carry Jesus to the city. Carry Jesus to your village. Carry Jesus everywhere you go. That they will know Christ through you. They will not cry through you. That's why you are free. Nothing hinders you now. Nothing holds you now. If any disease was in your voice, that disease is gone. Any disease in your throat, now it is gone. Any disease in your eyes, now it is gone. Any disease on your legs, you could not move, now it is gone. And now you are free to stand up. You're free to stand up. And then you take Jesus to your community. You're a miracle carrier. You're carrying the Savior to the lost. You're carrying the healer to the sick. You're carrying the deliverer to the oppressed. Carry Jesus to Jerusalem. Carry Jesus to the city. Take Jesus everywhere you go. You are the appointed of the Lord. You are the anointed of the Lord. You are the one that is free. My brother, you are free. My sister, you are free. Nothing will tie you down anymore. Your sorrow has gone. Your sadness has gone. The attacks of the enemy, they are all gone. You are free. Power. Power that sets you free. Power that keeps you free, free today and free tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. That's good, but you can make it greater. In Jesus' name we pray. Your voice looks like the voice of the people who are free. You look like people that are not tied down anymore. You look like people that are delivered already. You look like the redeemed of the Lord. Did Satan hear that? I hope Satan had it. But should in case he did it hear, let him hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How can Satan bind anybody like this? How can evil forces bind anybody like this? You are free. You are the one. The anointing of the Lord is upon your life. I see you carrying Jesus everywhere you go. I see you carrying joy everywhere you go. I see you. And people are asking you, where did you get this victory? And you'll be telling them. You have a testimony already. 
You have a testimony already. You have a testimony already. Amen. Just raise up your hands. Beautiful hands. Anointed hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this day. We glorify you today because this is the day. The day of power. And we come to share in that power of resurrection. Oh Lord, I pray that this power of resurrection will operate in every life, in every family, in the children, in the youth, in the adults right now, in Jesus' name. All those unseen powers, all those unseen forces, all those unseen enemies, I command you now, you've gone already. Get out in Jesus' name. All the sicknesses you brought, that blindness, I command you right there, that spirit of blindness, come out in Jesus' name. That paralysis and stroke, I command you right now, you have no right to be there anymore. My brother, you are free, my sister, you are free, rise up in Jesus' name. And the spirit of deafness and the spirit of dumbness, you have no right to be there anymore, freedom has come. Deliverance has come. Miracle has come. Receive your healing. Receive your hearing. And receive your speaking in Jesus' name. All that stroke and all the sin that is uh, wrong with your backbone. I pray right now the power of release and the power of deliverance will come upon you right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. HIV AIDS no more. No more. I command all the virus get out of their body and be flushed out in Jesus' name. Every oppression, every attack, every evil thing, we cancel it right now. The power of resurrection on this wonderful day of the Lord cancels all those sicknesses out of your body in Jesus' name. Bad luck will not remain with you. Failure will not remain with you. Unemployment will not remain with you. And the going back and just the falling and falling will not remain with you. Rise up and succeed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray for every brother, every sister, every child, every youth. I pray the power of resurrection will come upon your life. And now that you are free, nothing will hold your leg. Nothing will hold your hand. Nothing will hold your brain. Nothing will hold your business. Now the power of resurrection has released you into manifold blessings in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O oh Lord, in every heart, in every life, in every family. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.